Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O necessary sin of Adam, which was blotted out by the death of Christ, O happy fault, Felix culpa, that merited to possess such and so great a Redeemer. Words taken from the exalted from last night's vigil of Easter. Also from the gospel today, be not affrighted. Ye seek Jesus of Nazareth, who is crucified. He is risen. He is not here. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Tradition tells us that we lowly humans are to occupy in heaven the place left vacant by the fallen angels. Their choir stalls are ours for the taking. It's amazing. Listen to St. Gregory the Great. He says, this is from the Matins for today, Easter Sunday. For the resurrection of our Redeemer is indeed our feast because it renders us immortal. But it is also a feast for the angels because their number was completed upon our admission into heaven. So they lost a portion of their numbers with the resurrection. Now we can enter into heaven and fill the empty places. Listen to St. Bonaventure. He states that, with his majesty's resurrection and ascension, was begun to be repaired the ruins of their heavenly company, occasioned by the fall of their reprobate brethren, some of whose vacancies were filled up by the glorious number of the blessed souls of patriarchs, prophets, and others. In other words, Adam, all the way to Joseph and John the Baptist, were in the trail in the train of our Lord going to heaven on the ascension, who on that day triumphantly entered the heavenly Jerusalem and took possession of it as their own right and inheritance. They repaired the ruins, says St. Bonaventure. Again, let's turn to St. Gregory from today's Matins. On his own and our feast, so on the feast of man and the angels, Easter, then there appeared this angel in white garments. For when, by the Lord's resurrection, we are led back to the world above, the damage done to the heavenly homeland is repaired. St. Gregory the Great. The damage to the heavenly homeland is repaired. Amazing. So it seems the angelic choirs were, so to speak, wounded too. And it was being healed by mankind. Hmm. Our Lord brought perfection to heaven by opening its doors to mankind, by allowing something that was missing to be filled, namely the seats of the fallen angels. Yet it still lacks perfection to this day until the last choir stall is finally filled. Wow. That's an amazing thing. Back on September 29th, we reflected from this pulpit, we reflected on how the first to take up his choir stall was the leader and the greatest of the angels. And he was the first to enter heaven, and it's St. Michael. I wonder who will be the last saint to enter heaven to make it complete, perfect, and finish the repairs. Many a saint down through history wanted to be that last saint. And we're going to talk about that in a moment. Where will this saint's place be? Now let us not forget how Lucifer's place, that's the devil, Lucifer, he fell. He was the light bearer. Lucifer's place was way, way up there in the choir of the angels. And perhaps it is already filled Nevertheless, we can rest assured it is or will be filled by a human saint. That's amazing. A little aside, just to kind of 
buttress this argument, this idea, this traditional notion, which is accurate. In Quito, Ecuador, a lot of beautiful things to see there. I once saw an amazing painting of St. Thomas Aquinas teaching a group of angels. A little angels there taking notes almost, you know, looking at him. How is this possible? Because St. Thomas rose up through their ranks and could now enlighten the lower angels. That's how it works. The higher angels enlighten the lower angels. But how can a lowly man take such high places, high positions in the heavenly Jerusalem? We know our place in heaven is determined by our charity upon death. Whatever charity you have upon death, that will determine your place in heaven. More charity, higher place. That's the rule. But how is charity measured? How do we measure love? One word, sacrifice. You don't know if someone loves you until they really sacrifice for you. That's when you know they love you. Okay, you know something's going on there when they give up their excellence for you. So our Lord said in St. John's Gospel, Greater love than this no man hath, than a man lay down his life for his friends. And how is love to be increased? How can I grow in love? How can I grow in charity? Sacrifice, same answer. The angels made one sacrifice of themselves that enabled them to take their place. We talked about that last September too. They sacrificed their excellence. The devil didn't. That's why he fell. Unlike the angels, we lowly humans are not that fixed in our choices like the angels. We have a body. We can change our mind. But we can also make a life of sacrifice and climb up and up and up through the choirs, surpassing even the angels in holiness. We need to be about making sacrifices then. Sacrifices of our excellence. Thus the women today in the gospel bringing costly spices. Joseph of Arimathea giving away his tomb, newly carved out of the rock. And even willing to forego his reputation and everything to get from Pilate the body of Christ. Receive the Lord. The trouble is some of them, those angels, I mean these empty choir stalls, the trouble is some of them are way up there. And in God's plan, the reward must be proportional to the work done. Our Lady is the greatest of the saints, nay, even the very queen of the universe. Her queenship was not merely a gift, nay, she won it by conquest. She won it by conquest. She suffered with the king of the universe at the foot of the cross. They suffered together in a most intimate way, the one feeling all the pains of the other. Their sacred hearts completely united on every level. In order to be the mother of all men, Our Lady suffered for all men, no matter who they were, to be their mother, to give them birth. If only they would respond to the graces of conversion. No one is separate from her love. No one can be separate, separated from her love unless they finally die and go to hell. The key point, though, is this. She merited this place, the highest and greatest of all the saints of God. She won it by conquest. She is St. Michael's queen, too. He serves her. No wonder his majesty went first to greet and comfort her after he rose from the dead on the first Easter morn. Now, we might think of all this under the aspect of friendship, which demands equality. When you have friendship, there's some equality. Thus, the fathers of the church were famous for saying over and over, God became man so that man might become God. Thus, his majesty became man and provided us every means possible for this, to become like him. And all of them, all of these means, 
flow from his cross. They flow from his side, from his sacred wounds. Again, this is why his majesty will not be known or work apart from his cross. And those who love him best share in the cross. Padre Peel, look at that. He had the stigmata. Some say St. Francis of Assisi is the one taking Lucifer's chair way up there in heaven. And he was crucified. He had the stigmata. Interesting, isn't it? And this is why the last temptation of Christ was to come down from the cross. Come down from the cross. We can't let you do this. By his wounds we are healed and saved, says the scriptures. He will not be known without them. This means the more we die with him on the cross in this life, the more we're wounded with him and for him, the more we will rise through the choirs of the angels in the next. This also explains why many saints wanted to be living even unto the end of the times of all time, the end times themselves, to take up that last choir stall, to merit that place. Because they knew that maximum opportunities to love and sacrifice for and with Christ were possible, most especially in historical periods like our own. In other words, these difficult times provide endless opportunities on a daily, even seemingly hourly and minutely basis to fill up our lamps, to shine brightly like stars in a dark night. It's getting dark We need some light. These times give us more and more chances to climb higher through the choirs of the angels, to increase the size of our vessels, nay, to become an abyss of humility so that the abyss of divine charity will fill us up. Thus, the Psalms, we will fulfill them. Psalm 40, where it says, Abyss calls unto abyss. I'm empty now, Lord. You can fill me up. There it is. Think of all the chances we have daily to show love and sacrifice our excellence simply by turning off all the distractions that seem so normal and legitimate and ubiquitous. Do we have to really listen to all that and watch that and read that? Junk? Click? Sacrifice? We're now, it seems to me, in a good position to answer why we exclaim at the Easter Vigil, O necessary sin of Adam, O Felix culpa, O happy fault. God allowed this sin of Adam because if Adam had not sinned, mankind would have been confirmed in grace from the beginning, not able to suffer, not able to merit any more. Like the angels, one act of Adam would have set his place. He would have remained impassable, not able to suffer from that moment on, not able to increase the vessel, not able to climb up through the choirs of the stalls of the angels. With Adam's sin, his majesty made it possible for us to die every day for him. Greater love hath no man than he laid out his life for his friends. Love is shown in sacrifice. Charity refers all to the beloved, sacrificing its excellence. We don't do it just once. We can do it daily. Now we can become seraphic, like Francis, Teresa, Bonaventure, Thomas, and so many of the saints, we call them seraphic. Why? Because they've reached the seraphic choir. That's why. Thus we fulfill the words of King David quoted by St. Paul. Each day I die. I lay down my life for the other. I sacrifice my excellence. I grow in charity, not just once, but again and again and again. Daily, even every moment, as the saints learned. And I merit a higher reward. Angels become my friends and companions. As they were for the women today at the tomb. 
Notice the others were paralyzed and helpless. They had not sacrificed their excellence, and nor were they willing to do so. And thus they were paralyzed. And they're turned into useless humans. They're going to be thrown into the pit of hell. There it is, right there in the gospel. When we get to heaven, we will see how many chances we missed. Then we will want to come back and stay until the end of the world. Oh, let me go back, Lord, and I will serve you forever. Demerit again. Oh, Felix Culpa, oh, happy fault. God has a choir stall set aside for us. And to get there, we have to merit this grace, enduring much. And God has given us something to merit with, something to endure. Having troubles, having a, have a cross to bear, good. This is so you can merit His majesty chose to meet two people today on Easter Sunday, the queen of the universe and the one who used her sins to become an intimate friend, the Magdalene, the Magdalene. Adam sinned, but now we use it for good. We're not for sinning, but we have to realize that sin happens. Now we're going to use it for good. God allowed it. I'm going to turn it to good. Our lady never sinned, but even she was able to use the suffering caused by sin to expand her conquest to the farthest reaches of the universe. The Magdalene sinned, but instead of despairing over her past, she used her sins as a sort of fertilizer to gain the ultimate victory and become among the most favored of all God's saints. The mystics tell us she is among the most beloved of the saints in heaven. She used her sins for fertilizer. She went not from sin to sin. She did that once. And if she kept on that path, she would have had a very deep place in hell. Instead, she went from grace to grace to grace using her sins as fertilizer. They spurned her on to a greater and greater heights of self-giving and sacrifice. She has now taken her place among the seraphim. Oh, Felix culpa. Amazing. Is this not among the reasons why His Majesty kept His five wounds? They speak to us about the possibilities of perfection through suffering and self-sacrifice. Easter speaks strongly to us. Do not let your suffering be wasted. A choir stall in heaven has your name on it if you're willing to suffer for it and claim it. And may we all be saved souls together in heaven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.